now we have some of these builders offering rates as low as 2.99%. These builders are going crazy. And in order to move this inventory and lure buyers in, they're having to offer these teaser mortgage rates, which is very scary, everyone. These teaser rates are exactly what happened in the mid 2000s housing bubble. Lots of people locked in rates around 3%. And then those rates exploded to five, six and 7% in future years, which led to a wave of mortgage defaults in the late 2000s. Well, something very similar is now happening at these home builder sites. Because literally as I walk around here in this development north of Phoenix, there's hundreds of homes being developed and being built and their price tags are insane. If you look on Zillow, these homes are listed on the market for around 830 to 850,000 for uh, homes that are like 2,000, 2,100 square feet. That pencils out to a mortgage payment of around 5,300 a month, which is still very, very expensive, which is why they're offering these super low special financing teaser interest rates. Just yesterday, I was in a home building community on the southwest side of Phoenix, where they were giving a 3% mortgage rate for the first year, 4% in the second year, 5% in the third year, and then 6% for the rest of the loan term. And I think for some buyers out there, you might look at that and think that that's a great deal because that will really lower your payments for the initial part of the time when you own the house. However, you got to be very, very careful buying with these teaser mortgage rates because what I fear is happening is that a lot of buyers are getting into the market with these teaser mortgage rates and not really doing the math on how much they're going to end up having to pay down the line. And then very likely once their mortgage rates shoot up in a couple years, lots of them are going to move to sell and flood the market with inventory. Now, an interesting question to ask is, where are mortgage rates heading in 2024? Because we can see they've already gone from eight to 7% and the builders are now inventing their own market where mortgage rates are more like five or 6%. But where do we really think mortgage rates are gonna be a year from now? Let's just say after the next presidential election, where are mortgage rates gonna be? Well, we can see what the betting markets are thinking in terms of where the Fed is gonna have interest rates at the end of 2024. And right now the betting markets think the short-term interest rates are gonna be around four to a four and a quarter percent a year from now. So that's about a 1.25% rate cut over the next 12 months. So the betting markets think Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve are gonna cut rates by 1.25%. So if they do, what would be the impact on mortgage rates? Well, I think if that were to happen, mortgage rates would probably go down to the low 6% range if the Fed were to cut rates by that much. So maybe mortgage rates are in the low 6% range at the end of 2024, which would be pretty close to kind of the long-term norm for mortgage rates over the last three decades. But now an even better question would be, is if mortgage rates are in the low 6% range a year from now, what would that do to the housing market in buyer demand? Well, a lot of people who work in real estate are gonna say that's gonna cause buyer demand to go through the roof. They're gonna say prices are gonna surge out of control if mortgage rates go back down to 6%. But folks, I don't think so. I don't think so, because these builders are actually offering us a clue as to what's gonna happen in the housing market when mortgage rates drop. Because remember, the builders have been operating in a different housing market where they have bought down mortgage rates for buyers over the last year down to close to 6%. And the result has been home sales for builders have gone back to the normal long-term level. So builders offering 6% mortgage rates has gotten sales back to the normal level. But at the same time, builders have actually cut the price of houses by around 18% in nominal terms. And so builders have cut prices 18%. They've lowered mortgage rates to 6% already through the buy downs. And they're just back to a normal level of sales, which is an indication that the U.S. housing market is not likely to boom just because mortgage rates go down to 6%. It's more likely to trend closer to going back to normal. Now, the other thing that you got to think about with a reduction in interest in mortgage rates in 2024 is what it's going to mean for the economy. Because that's the angle here that no one in real estate really likes to talk about. You know, everyone likes to focus on, oh, interest and mortgage rates are gonna go down incrementally, more buyers are gonna come in. But the reason that mortgage and interest rates are gonna go down, if they do, is because the economy is not doing so good. The Fed is not gonna cut interest rates for no reason. They're gonna cut interest rates because they see the economy tipping into a recession. And if we look historically, folks, the moment in time that the Fed starts cutting interest rates, that typically happens to be three to six months before the unemployment rate spikes out of control and the economy goes to, excuse my language, hell in a handbasket. Point is folks, when the Fed starts cutting, that's historically a signal 
that the economy, the housing market, things are about to get worse. It's not a signal that all of a sudden things are just gonna get way better and everything is gonna go back up. And one really actually useful resource, if you wanna understand where the economy is heading in real time, you should read the Fed Beige Book. The, Fed, the Federal Reserve releases the Beige Book once every, I think, six to seven weeks. And it's basically an anecdotal account of what's going on in the economy through all of the Federal Reserve's contacts throughout the real estate industry, the banking system, manufacturing, leisure and hospitality businesses. The Fed basically polls all their contacts once every two months and they ask them, like, what's going on in the economy? And what's concerning is that the most recent Fed Beige Book was not good was not good. There was some really concerning commentary in there, especially out of New York City. Uh, the New York Federal Reserve was talking about how wages are now going down for college graduates in certain finance and tech industries. So there's like wage deflation going on in some white collar professions for young workers. That's a concerning signal. The Kansas City Fed, they reported how people in their district are sharing meals and sharing rooms in order to lower their costs so they can afford things. So people are bunking up with roommates, people are bunking up with family, and they're cutting back on how much they're going out to eat. That came from the Kansas City Fed. The Boston Fed, they said that home sales were the lowest in Boston that they've been since 1995. So you have all these kind of concerning anecdotal accounts suggesting that the economy is slowing faster than people think, and that maybe some of the mainstream indicators like unemployment rate could be lagging behind what's actually going on in the economy. But one area I'm particularly concerned about is here in Arizona, everyone. But the economy in Arizona seems to be tilting into a downturn. And one metric that's really showing some weakness is a metric called retail foot traffic. And this is a super interesting data point, everyone. It comes from a company called Placer.ai. And this company actually has their software in a lot of different applications that you and me use on our phones. And through that software, they're able to track where you and me are going. You know, whether we're going to stores, whether we're going shopping, uh, kind of creepy almost, but this is what this company does. They have this data and they put out this data set on retail foot traffic. How many people are going to retail centers and shopping? And here in Arizona, the retail foot traffic is down 14% from pre-pandemic levels. And you gotta ask yourself, how does that make any sense, right? Arizona was the place where everyone moved during the pandemic. All the people from California, from Washington, they all moved to Arizona. And yet there's 14% fewer people in Arizona today going out and shopping than there were three years ago. Now you can see it wasn't always this way. Back in 2021, the retail foot traffic in Arizona spiked up back to a normal level, but now it keeps trending down and it's getting worse and worse every month, suggesting that there's fewer people coming here. Fewer and fewer people coming to Arizona looking at houses, renting houses, and spending money in the economy, which is at some point going to lead to an economic downturn. Now, this data point, retail foot traffic, it's down most places since the pandemic because people are now shopping more online. But the average decline is something more like five to 6%, five to 6% decline for most states, not 14% like it is in Arizona. Additionally, Texas is another state where the retail foot traffic is just way lower than you think it would be. In Texas, the retail foot traffic is down 13 to 14%. Again, a state where all these people moved in, but now seem to be leaving or just not visiting as much. And interestingly, Florida, this is another state where the retail foot traffic is down 9%. Now, this is one where 9% isn't as bad as it is in Texas and Arizona, but we're seeing a faster deterioration over the last six to 12 months in Florida, suggesting that Florida is starting to really feel the effects of the pandemic being over. Not as many people going to Florida, not as many people looking to buy houses in Florida. The economy there as a result could be hitting a downturn in 2024. And ultimately folks, a downturn in the housing market in these pandemic boom towns and boom states, this will be something that will be healthy in the long run for these states. Because I can tell you, one of the reasons that fewer people are coming to these areas is because they got so expensive. You know, I've talked to a lot of the locals here since I visited Phoenix a couple days ago, and the story is the same from all of them. They're all saying, yeah, things just got way too expensive. A lot of people are saying Phoenix is becoming a lot like California in terms of how expensive the rent and the home prices are, how expensive the gas is. And uh, it's something that's really become a struggle for a lot of the people living out here in Phoenix and Arizona, and a lot of these people are now leaving. I've talked to people who are moving back because it just doesn't make as much sense anymore to live out here when the cost of living is not as cheap as it once was. But of course, folks, I don't wanna to be too bearish 
on uh, the real estate market in these areas in the long term. Because I think in the long term, these areas could still be good places to buy. It's just a matter of the price point you get in at. When you look at Phoenix and you see the home value to income ratio over the last 20 years, you can see today we're at a level where prices are just way too high. They're significantly higher than the long-term norm by about 23, 24%, um, almost at a similar level that they were in 06, 07 before the last crash. And so that means the housing market here is overvalued everyone. I mean, we need to see either prices go down a lot and or incomes go up a lot, right? We would need to see one of those two things happen or both for the market here to become more fairly valued. And what I'm personally looking for, if you're a home buyer investor, what you might want to look for, look for markets where the value to income ratio and the overvaluation rates are coming down and coming down fast. You know, look for areas that aren't as overvalued or maybe even are undervalued. If we look at a zip code map of the Phoenix Metro, we can see there's certain zip codes that are less than 10% overvalued. That suggests they have less downside to go. Additionally, we need to talk about cash flow because if you're a real estate investor, a lot of you, if you're an investor, you're buying for cash flow, right? You want to buy a property and then rent it out and get a decent return in the problem in Phoenix right now is that not only are the rents going down, the problem is the cap rates and the cash flows are already very, very low. Like the cap rate in Phoenix right now is around 5% total. In a lot of zip codes, it's around four to four and a half percent, which means you would buy a house, let's say for $500,000 and get probably 20 to 25,000 in income from that house from day one, from renting it out after accounting for your expenses. But the problem with that is that short-term interest rates right now are around 5%. Even with all this talk of Fed rate cuts, the one-year treasury is still north of 5%. So you could literally just take that money that you were gonna buy an investment property with in Phoenix and just buy a US government bond for one year and get the same cash flow return literally get the same net income while maintaining your flexibility and liquidity in the event that prices do go down significantly in the next year or two, you would then clip your coupon for a year and then have your liquidity to then be able to buy and take advantage of a downturn. And so that's what I think a lot of real estate investors are doing right now. Like the CFO of Invitation Homes, the largest Wall Street landlord in America, basically came out and said that's what they're doing, that they're uh, selling some properties and just parking them in the bank and earning a 5% return and waiting for better opportunities to come. And those companies like Invitation Homes, they bought in areas like Phoenix 10 to 12 years ago at the bottom of the last downturn. Because at the bottom of the last downturn, folks, it was actually a great time to buy here in Phoenix. The prices went down 50% in the last crash. Uh, you can see the typical value of a house went down from like around 300,000 to 150,000. And such a huge collapse in prices uh, allowed the cap rates to go up. Like in many of these zip codes, you could have bought in 2012 at a cap rate of 15 to 17%. I mean, that's a good deal. And that's why a lot of these Wall Street investors got their start 10 to 12 years ago, buying in metros like Phoenix at the bottom of the downturn. But as you can see, we're at a four and a half to 5% cap rate today. That's just not gonna cut it for most investors who are cash flow driven. So we're gonna need to see those cap rates go up. And because rents are going down, the only real way for the cap rates to go up is prices to go down. So folks, if you're a home buyer, or real estate investor, trying to make a decision about when and where to buy, I would encourage you folks, go to www.reventure.app right now, where you can research all the data I've talked about on this video on inventory levels, home price trends, overvaluation, cap rate. It's all there for nearly every zip code in America. Understanding this data is gonna help you make a much more informed decision about when and where to buy a house. Because if you try to buy a house without looking at this data, you're basically taking a shot in the dark uh, on if you're making a good decision or not. You don't wanna do that in today's market. You wanna have data on your side and understand what the trends are. So go to www.reventure.app right now to take a look at that data. You could use the free plan to access eight basic data points or upgrade to the premium plan, $39 a month to get access to overvaluation rate, cap rate, as well as the percentage of sellers cutting the price. Until next time, everyone, this is Nick from Reventure Consulting signing off.